Hello, my name is Avery and welcome to an entirely different type of video from anything you've ever seen on this channel. I'm going to be talking about the binding of Isaac, Rebirth, as part of an essay for my critical video game study class in 2021. I'm a student at the University of Chicago and this is a uh, pretty cool course I've gotten the opportunity to take. Uh, so without further ado, let's get into it. For a brief history, The Binding of Isaac is an indie roguelike developed by Edward McMillan in 2014. It was actually a remake of his first Binding of Isaac game, uh, and he called it Rebirth. Within the game, the player controls Isaac, a young naked child in a very religious household. Upon hearing the voice of God, his mother takes all of his toys away from him, forcing him to play using only his imagination. One day, however, she hears this voice urging her to kill Isaac. In response, Isaac escapes into his room and finds a dungeon under his rug. He goes down through a series of these dungeons, shooting his own tears to defend himself. These dungeons are referred to as chapters within the game, and as you go through them, they become more and more abstract. A lot of the theories regarding the story are confirmed by Macmillan himself. After reading countless theory posts on Reddit and or articles, he said that this one that I'm about to cite was actually the most mind-blowingly accurate one. The idea is that the box that Isaac encounters at the end of the game, the toy chest, is a representation of the creativity and imagination that he himself has as he goes through this dungeon. It represents a safe place where the outside world can't get at him. There's no religious issues, there's no parental abuse, and it's simply Isaac with his own imagination. So as he descends into the dungeon, which is really created by his own imagination as represented by his inclusion into the box, the game represents a retreat into his own mind. He becomes more and more afraid of the outside world and more and more engrossed in his own unconscious. And the further you go down in the dungeons, the deeper you get into his unconscious. The disorganization of Isaac's mind can be highly attributed to the disorganization of the music. As you delve deeper and deeper into the dungeons, the music, which starts off as tonal and oftentimes having a strict theme, becomes more and more abstract. This disorganization of the music is representative of Isaac's descent into his own disorganized unconscious, dealing with more and more abstract concepts from his birth all the way to his death. To begin the dissection of the binding of Isaac's music, let's start with the upper floors. These happen in the earlier chapters and mostly consist of the basement. The music here is distinct and robust. In addition to the obviously melodic tone of the soundtrack itself, when fighting monsters, a guitar enters with a very clear note progression, overlapping the background music. This adds an even more melodic driving force to the game's soundtrack. The music is full of many minor and diminished chords, which can invoke apprehension in the listener. However, there aren't that many pure dissonances. There is still a very clear melodic line. The mood that the music presents is in direct mimicry of the environment and its enemies. There aren't many abstract concepts being discovered here. It is simply a basement in Isaac's mind. While it is constructed by his imagination, there's nothing that he's dealing with that is some sort of deep psychological trauma. A lot of them are surface level fears, such as a fear of spiders and flies, something he probably often saw while locked in his room. As such, the music is melodic, straightforward, and very simple to understand. The next chapter that Isaac encounters is that of the caves. There is a very clear mood difference in the music as you enter this stage. It becomes much more abstract, 
with only a simple second interval and a few diminished chords separating the background from the melody. The layered music on this floor, that heard when fighting enemies, is also very difficult to distinguish from the regular theme. It consists of some very deep, what I believe to be an electronic bass, played in a droning manner over and over again. Once again, this abstraction is mirrored in the environment and the enemies. The environment takes on a much darker tone. Instead of that of a basement, it is that of catacombs beneath even the basement. The enemies, on the other hand, have a lot more of a biological inheritance. Rather than being flies and rats and spiders, there's a lot of skeletons, dead objects, and skulls floating around trying to attack Isaac. As Isaac delves deeper into his imagination, and with it his unconscious, the music follows suit. It becomes very difficult to distinguish any individual tones. It becomes somewhat droning, a lot less melodic, and significantly more dissonant. This goes with the theme of the level, as well as the theme of the enemies involved. However, once again, the deeper you get, the more intense and the more abstract the music gets. Before the final stage comes the depths. Here is a sort of transitional period. The music becomes almost completely unrecognizable compared to the upper two floors. However, upon very close listening, there is a distinguishable melodic line. While I wouldn't necessarily call it tonal, it definitely has a sort of pattern that can be attributed to a melody over simply background music. This transitional period ends with the next stage, the womb, which has by far the most atonal and dissonant music yet. At this stage, we really begin to see Isaac's descent into his own unconscious. The thoughts are jumbled, the enemies are as abstract as possible, and the music is without any form whatsoever. In the womb, Isaac is dealing with the ideas of his own birth. This is a very heavy concept for a little child to understand, and as such, his mind isn't able to construct it as clearly as the upper floors. With the disintegration of order surrounding him, the music follows suit. It becomes completely scratchy and has almost no distinction from any other tones going on in the game. It serves to reflect the melting of his mind. He cannot comprehend his own imagination. It is nearly impossible to distinguish any sort of a difference between the standard background music and the overlapping music when fighting enemies. I'll try to play some, but it's very, very difficult to tell, even with high quality headphones. The music on this deepest floor sounds as if Isaac's own mind is melting. He is unable to comprehend anything that's going on in his unconscious, and with it comes a total disintegration of both setting and sound. By closely listening to the music present in The Binding of Isaac as he descends through the floors, the player is able to understand to a greater degree the amount of disorganization that is going on in his subconscious. Without closely observing and identifying the differences in the music throughout the floor, 
the player is able to get a much fuller sense of the story of the Binding of Isaac. By only paying attention to the settings and enemy differences, they're missing out on the disorganization that occurs at a deep level within Isaac's subconscious. By taking this holistic approach when identifying and dissecting the story behind the Binding of Isaac, the player gains a much fuller understanding of the background and what is going on within Isaac's own subconscious. Thank you guys so much for watching. Uh, I know this is very different than the normal content I put out on this channel, uh, but it's very hard to show off my game collection when I'm in college and obviously I didn't bring any of that with me. So I have like five games here. One of them is Hotel for Dogs for the DS. <laughs> but um, yeah, if you're still watching, I appreciate it very much. This class has been awesome and hopefully this essay is going to give me a good grade. Yeah. Uh, thank you guys so much for watching. If you enjoyed, like maybe, maybe subscribe, who knows. See you guys next time.